<sighs> so, before we get into it again, you'll notice actually that there's still quite a lot of medals missing. And a lot of them are like, well, you're going to see here, I've 100% of these two, but they're like stuck. Oh. Oh, time attacks. And like stuff like that, where it's just like, uh, you know. There's always time attacks. Or overtakes, mostly. Yep, overtakes time attacks. shows how bad at the game I am. How I am bad at the game. Or how bad the game I am game. Wait, what? Oh, I thought there was another one. More time attacks. So I feel like we probably never finished this game because I'm really bad at the time attacks, which is a shame. I'm pretty sure I said I was going to do something else than this, you know. Uh, where was it? Yeah, Donington. Well, we'll try it with this one. We'll try and get better than third. Oh man. To be honest, I really want to get back into fighting games. Now, I've got a few videos that I've got to edit and I'll upload soon. Uh, of me, I bought Ultra 4 recently because I wanted to get. I was playing Alpha and I was learning Adom. I was like, yeah, this is fun, but you know, I really miss playing Jury, but like a really specific iteration of Jury, which is just basically present only in Street Fighter 4. And then they completely ruined her for 5, in my opinion. Now, uh, the moveset's just, it's not the same, man. <laughs> All the sick shit she had. Yeah, so I went back and played that, and there'll be some stuff going up about that soon, and I thought, well, while I'm at it, I'm going to relearn Tekken 7, start doing some Tekken 7 LPing, and yeah, like I was saying in like a few parts ago now, I'm really doing this channel just for funsies, and RE3 burnt me the fuck out of gaming for a while, so these are actually happening like a month later or something. Because uh, I was just like, oh, I can't deal with it anymore. And I thought, well, you know, now that we've got the RE free playthrough out of the way, although this is going to be a weird time setting on my scheduling now, uh, now that we got the RE three playthrough out of the way, I'm just going to have some fun, and we're just going to do what I want to do, because it's my fucking channel. <laughs> so we're just going to be playing this, Doing some fighting games, maybe some Devil May Cry. I'll see what I feel like. I, I I don't really have the time to be doing full like scheduled LPs. We still got to finish Akami though. Whenever I feel like it, and it's just like you know, if I feel like picking up a game and recording it, I feel like picking up a game and recording it. It's really the editing that's bogging me down lately because I'm getting a lot of machine noise in the uh, sound mix lately and it's fucking up the quality a lot because I hold the controller too close to the mic and the way I sit and my setup isn't very good, so. Uh, yeah, so um, <clears throat> I wanted to get into that. I wanted to start doing Dragon Ball Fighter Z, uh, Guilty Gear and some other stuff. I noticed there was a lot of KOF and Fatal Fury on the PS4, and there was Ultima MVC3, which I used to love, but was bad at. I thought, you know what? 
when I got money, and whenever I'm bored, I'm going to go out and uh, buy another fighting game, just play some fighting games on this, and, uh, you know, it's just, ooh, my King Crimson got me there, you see it? Just random, oh, I didn't even show it, there was just a sudden, like, scraping effect. Uh, I think I'll catch it in the recording. Yeah, so I just thought, oh, you know, that would be, uh, that will be basically what the, uh, the channel is now. I know everyone else is like, woo, goes to Tsushima, and I was like, oh, you know, I could play that, but... Eh, I was kind of burnt out on that kind of style of game after a while too, and I just don't have as much fun with it, because it's just not... It's not piquing my interest. Oh, don't die. No, don't die. Please, please stop twitching, there we go. So yeah, that and I looked at Ride 3, which is basically this game, but like the newest iteration with various bike brands, and it has a lot of bike brands, and I was like, oh, well, you know, once I've done this, that could be the continuation for this series of games, but um, pretty expensive, I have to admit. Shame I didn't get more out of RE3, to be honest, because I felt like that was pretty expensive, and I know that I'm not going to go back and play it, whereas I played the hell out of RE2. RE3 is just like, it's done now, you know, and that's that, so that's kind of sad. I don't think I'm going to go back and play it, really, other than to try and get the Magnum, and I'm not really that bothered. It's going to be a while. It's going to have a cooldown on it. I was thinking about doing the Devil May Cry story mode, but I've played that myself like six or seven times, so... If I feel like labbing, and I feel like getting back into it and doing some sick shit beforehand, and then getting into the hang of it again, I'll go through the story mode and... You know, it'll be a more practiced LP, because it's not really a blind run when I've played it like the campaign more than 12 times on various difficulties, so... We'll see how I feel. Uh, yeah, that's basically everything. Um, now to annoy some people with my weird Iron Maiden opinions. Because I'm a hardcore Iron Maiden fan, but I'm a really weird Iron Maiden fan. Like most of the bands I like, you'll notice this. Where um, I just really like them in a weird way, and it's like, hey, I can like them the way I want to like them. They produce this, if I like it, it's fine. I'm sure they don't mind. Yeah! After I finish this. Yeah, after I finish this uh, Ducati game, though, I, maybe a while until I pick up another racing game. I played Dirt 4 off-screen, but it's just... It's really not much of an interesting one. It's pretty, it's pretty involved. I'd have to stay quiet throughout all of it, and it's like, it's tense, but I'm not very good at it. And I've gotten out of practice recently, and... To be honest, it just feels like you're doing the same thing again and again. There aren't enough tracks. But there are, but like there's only so many tile sets kind of thing. Let's do it again, but on the suicide bike. Let's talk about Iron Maiden. My favorite albums, or the top albums in my opinion. Nah, let's not do that, because that's really difficult for me to... Like, I value a lot of Iron Maiden as like... It's all like a different thing from each other. Like a lot of people are like, oh yeah, well this is the best album. Number of the Beast is the best album. Peace of Mind is the best album. This is a... like their discography is very varied. A lot of people don't realize that. Like it's very difficult to tie it down. And there are merits to everything. People like to go, oh wow, no, no prayer for the dying sucks. 
No, it doesn't. It's got holy smoke on it. And bring back your daughter to a slaughter. It's fucking awesome. Some of it's weird, though. Assassin. There's only so many times you can hear Bruce Dickens and say, Assassin! Before you're like, oh, God. Because <laughs> that whole song, The Assassin, it sounds like a great idea for a song. But, like, the, the lyrics are, Better watch out, because I'm the assassin. Better watch out, because I'm the assassin. <laughs> assassin, assassin. Assassin, assassin. <laughs> and you're just like... And everyone used to rip into Blaze Bailey for just being repetitive. I mean, like, uh, Man on the Edge is just... Falling down <laughs> again and again, but... Some of those choruses are just you know, assassin, <laughs> like you know. Okay, fine. Um, was that even? There? What was "Be Quick or Be Dead" on? Was that no prayer for the dying, or was that fear of the dark? That's a sick album, a sick song. A lot of people ignore it. It's really good. Be quick or be dead, dead. Feels like a No Prayer for the Dying album uh, track. Uh, stop trying to kill me! This is why I can't get more unfed! Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good album, you can't ignore it. There's just some. Oh, Hooks in You as well. Hooks in you, hooks in me, hooks in the ceiling from the way I'm feeling. It's good, it's good, man. Fear of the Dark has some amazing tracks on it that are, like, horribly underrepresented. Like, he had some tracks where he's literally talking about, uh, Fear is the Key is talking about the rise of AIDS and other social things, where it's like, no one cares about this stuff until they can, like, until somebody famous dies, and he's referring to Freddie Mercury dying of AIDS. And saying the only reason people cared about AIDS and HIV and the awareness increase is because Freddie Mercury died of it. Otherwise, everyone would still be, like, doing this shit. And, like, it's, like, really talk about how, like, that's why it's called Fear is the Key. Uh, there's a song on there called Weekend Warriors, or it's about Weekend Warriors, the people who go out to football games and cause fights and shit and saying how football hooliganism is ruining in the sport. There's a load of really good stuff on there that, like, is horribly ignored and is trying to say something. And, like, their only ballad ever is on that album, isn't it? Uh, Wasting Love. Wasting Love is good. And a lot of people just like, ah, oh, Afraid to Shoot Strangers is way better, in my opinion, but, like, Wasting Love is still really good. You can't ignore Fear of the Dark. A lot of people do, and... They're stupid. It's great. Like, we need to go listen to that. Um, somewhere in Time, Port Somewhere in Time and Stranger in a Strange Land are both very good. Um, all that, like, isn't, yeah, Wasted Years is on there. There's a load of stuff on there. Uh, that I liked, but uh, didn't really give it as much time as I gave other albums. It's still a very good album. Uh, well, let's just not just talk about uh, underrated Maiden albums. Let's talk about some really good ones as well. Um, uh, like, I'm just going to go into some really weird shit now weird mob made in my cat. <laughs> what are you doing? He's <laughs> climbing around in my cupboard and poking his head out the door like, heh hey. <laughs> You're silly. Uh, there's some great stuff on Brave New World. I really like Brave New World. The dream is true. I only dream in black and white. All of that stuff. Out of the Silent Planet. Uh, Ghost of the Navigator. Oh man, a lot of that stuff. I didn't really like. Uh, what is it called? Wow. Is that Wicker Man? 
I really like Wicker Man. It's all right. It's just the riff on it, like the lick on it. It just again and again and again. And like he's really just like it doesn't feel very Wicker Man related. The chorus is just your time will come, your time will come again and again, and it just feels a bit like there's a certain thing about certain Maiden songs where they just don't have good choruses. Oh, I was heard again. Okay, we're going to abandon this and sick of this track. Uh, some of them, like they, like, they have some great lyricism and others, they just like, this is all you came up with and it's really boring. Uh, I used to hate Dance of Death. Just because the album artwork sucks, and I know it's not their fault. I know there was a lot of problems with the guy that they were trying to buy it off of, so they just kept the unrendered version. And uh, I don't even like the composition, even if you imagine it as redone in a nice way. It's just... Why are there just fucking naked demons dancing around? It's just... Dance of Death was a weird one for me. Um, can't ever say it really stuck with me like the others. 10 on that. Uh, I think there's some of that I was looking at here. Track day. Get first on these. S, S. Uh, yeah, Dance Stiff had Rainmaker on. Did it have Rainmaker on? It had Rainmaker on, and I like that one on No More Lies. No more lies. Uh, Passchendaele. A lot of people talk about Passchendaele. I didn't really dig it as much as most people I know did, but it's still good. Uh, Dance of Death, though, not one of my favorite albums. Um, really like their two most recents. A lot of people are like, eh. But then there's some really good stuff on there that's really new for a band that's been going for years now. Like, I mean, Empire of the Clouds is just a brand new thing for them. Uh, but like, Final Frontier was just, I like pretty much all of Final Frontier. Like, there's nothing, like, I think they've become much more consistent Iron Maiden over the years. Like, if there's anything you can rely on, it's Iron Maiden will make songs that you go, this is a good song, I like this song. I, it's, it's pleasant, maybe it's not the most memorable out of their entire back catalogue, but it is good, it's a good standard. It can't be bad, it feels like they can't let it be bad because they're Iron Maiden. You know, whereas Metallica and other bands of the same kind of pedigree are like, ah, oh, people buy it anyway, who gives a fuck, and it's just crap from beginning to end, and you're like, and then to the point now that, like, if Metallica or Megadeth make a good album in a 10-year span, everyone's like, oh, fucking great. Finally, like, you know, with, like, Death Magnetic being acceptable. Just acceptable. It's not trash. And everyone's just like, yay, Metallica are back. And then they start making trash again, and everyone's just like, oh, well, we'll buy it on the off chance it's not trash later. And it's the same with Megadeth. Endgame was arguably... What's it called, Endgame? Yeah. Way before Thanos. <laughs> and um, Endgame was arguably a stronger overall album than Death Magnetic, but both were absolutely amazing albums from bands that had been producing nothing but 90s era crap and early aughts era total loss of identity crap. That was basically just like, why are you even here anymore? And I don't want to be a dick, but like, oh yeah, you guys loved Cryptic Writings and Risk, right? You guys loved St. Anger, right? Or Load and Reload, which is just like... Trying to defend Load and Reload, if, if, it, if they were Godsmack albums, it would make sense. <laughs> like, you know? That's what I'm saying. It's not Metallica, it's... it's Post grunge, and it's just, it's just not good. Like I listen to them back to back. Fuel is good, 
And there's like two or three other tracks on those albums that are pretty good. But it ain't top level Metallica. It's kind of wimpy and not very great. <coughs> um, Death Magnetic was a return to form which clearly the band needed. Endgame was a return to form that Megadeth really needed. Which is basically saying that Dave Mustaine really needed. <laughs> like, because the system has failed was kind of weird. It had good stuff on there, but it was just like, this is what happens if you let Dave Mustaine go on a political rant for an entire album. It stops making sense, and you're like, why is he, what the fuck is he talking about? Like, you know, and it's like diss tracks about his drummers and stuff, and you're just like, like, tears in a vial, and, uh, Back in the day, just roasting people who weren't born in the boomer era of metal. If you weren't there, I wasn't fucking born, Mustang. Fuck you. <laughs> if you weren't there when I started, well, why the fuck are you listening to this album? Oh, fuck off, then. Sorry I was born in 92, dipshit. Some of us aren't as old as you. You weren't in America listening to Megadeth when Killing Is My Business came out? What are you? lame, and it's like, no, I wouldn't have been born, or I would have been one, I can't remember when that came out, Iron Fist came out in the year I was born, dude, I don't know, and, uh, <clears throat> like, honestly, um, yeah, all of that stuff was way past me, and, like, that whole album, I tried to like that album, there was Scorpion on it that I didn't mind and a few others but like oh and United Abominations was fine but was just so ludicrous you look at that artwork and you're like what the fuck it has a good ish kind of cover as a duet of to, to Le Mans like a modern ish version that's basically the same thing again but like this time they have a girl singing some lines you're like, okay. Um, yeah, there's some good stuff on there. Some really sick riffs, like uh, Washington is next. Um, yeah, there's some good stuff there. But the, that horrible Gears of War song he wrote, which is literally him just messing around with his guitar and him going, Gears of War. Gears of War. And you're just like, oh, God. Burn Ice was fine. There were some that were fine. That you're like, this could stand up next to, like, the older Megadeth, and then a lot of stuff that you're like, holy shit, why did he make this? And this is just a paranoid ranting of a guy who clearly harbors a lot of misunderstood political ide ideologies, where he's like, America Stan, come on. He's literally sitting there going, oh, you know, those fucking Muslims, they're gonna come over here, America Stan. And you're just like, all right, buddy, <laughs> that's not what's gonna happen weirdo, man. And, like, you know, it becomes more and more, like, less and less, hey, this is pretty good metal with some political things, and it just turns into political right-wing raving with an occasional riff that's almost Friedman-era-esque, but isn't Friedman-era, so you don't care. <laughs> and it just starts to go more and more crackpot as you go through the fucking... The, through the aughts and the tens and then Endgame comes out and you're like someone finally reined him in someone did it someone reined him in a bit enough that it made sense and there were some riffs and it was good then Super Collider came out and I was like oh well, fuck it and 13 and I was just like ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh. ho 13 was like, yeah, okay. Super Collider just... <laughs> <laughs> what was the other album they released? And I was like, you know what? That's not pretty bad. That's, that's not terrible. I'd say Megadeth have more albums where you're sat there like, okay, that's not too bad. If you squint the right way, it's kind of good. Whereas Metallica produced less, and some of it is just utter dog shit. 
and you're just like, oh god. <laughs> what was that other one? Endgame was good. Uh, it was okay. There was some really good stuff on it, and then there was some real, like, oh, okay, forgettable. But I'd say there was less forgettable stuff, and like, oh yeah, the new one, the new one, the 2018 one, <laughs> Dystopia was fine. I liked a lot of it, and their cover of foreign policy was pretty interesting. Although I say pretty interesting, it was just a direct fucking cover. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, um, some good stuff on there, but again, had to have a diss track because it's Dave Mustaine. Hey, I'm Dave Mustaine, and I fucking hate everybody who worked in my old band. It's my band. So, okay, sure thing, buddy. Ripping into the guitarist he just fired. You're like, oh, you mean that guitarist who literally pulled Megadeth out of the trash heap? for in-game, <laughs> like, you know, and then kind of just left it up there for the, then on out. How dare he, man? Yeah, fucking yeah. It's like, dude, the only reason you stay relevant is because you fire everyone and bring in new guys every five seconds. It's the same thing as Ozzy Osbourne, man. It's like, the only reason he's staying relevant is because he keeps changing his uh, backing band, essentially and, like, re-injecting new blood into it every five seconds. Otherwise, it would just be crap. I mean, everyone sat there like, when's the Friedman reunion? And it's like, dude, that's never going to happen because Marty Friedman asks him to pay him and says, hey, dude, if you want me to come back and, like, work with you, you have to pay me writing credits for shit I write and appearance credit, like, fees and shit. And Dima says, like, why should I have to fucking pay people to work in my band? And you're like, because uh, that's how the industry works, dickhead. Also, I get the feeling he's difficult to work with. So I get the feeling that anyone, whenever they say, we're going to reunite the old classic lineup, by which I mean the second or third lineup that they had around peace cells to count down to extinction to euthanasia. Um... We, we want to do that. I think that half of the guys that aren't still with the band to this day, like LFs and stuff, uh, are just like, yeah, no, you're going to have to pay me a lot to work with you again, dude. And they're like, nah, I don't want to do that. It's like, it's Marty fucking Friedman. He can just do whatever he wants at this point. It's like virtuoso level guitarist. Really popular in Japan. Give him reasons why he should come back. I would be like that. If a company that I used to work with were like, oh man, we really miss you. You were like the best option we had in the past five years. Uh, like we still got parents begging me to bring you back and it was a shit company to work for and the boss was an ass hat, and they were paying me a fair amount before but I could get more money out of them. I'd say, okay, um, how much would you pay me to come back? Just out of interest. And if they say a lowish number or a lower number than what they were paying me before, which is pretty much what Mustaine was trying to do to Friedman, uh, they're probably like, fuck that. <laughs> I'd rather not get paid at all than work with your, your dumbass. Because like, I like Mustaine's work. I get the feeling that he's the most difficult asshole to work with on, in the industry that's like famous. But, um, yeah, man, when that's the state of, like, I'll, two of the biggest in the modern brash era, and with Slayer now leaving the uh, scene entirely, you're kind of sat there like, jeez. You know, you're just like, jeez. Although, did you hear that rumor? That was a pretty interesting rumor. Uh, I don't know if it was confirmed. It probably will be confirmed by the time this vid goes out but they were saying um, they're gonna like Kerry King's basically doing Slayer but without Tom Araya and with Phil Anselmo as the lead singer and I was like oh that's pretty cool and he's got like was it Lombardo might have been Lombardo or the guy that was on the final tour that wasn't Lombardo and they were saying oh maybe Gary Holt from Exodus was in it but I followed his Instagram and Gary Holt was like, 
nah, I just came off of a tour with Slayer, and now I'm doing Exodus stuff again while, you know, people are still in on the fresh, and now that Slayer have finished, I can just go to my band and go, hey guys, you saw me with Slayer, do you want to check out Exodus? Get people in on Exodus, which are an underrated fresh band, they're really good. Yeah, man. <clears throat> if you haven't given Exodus a try, and you like thrash, you like the big four, but you don't know where else to go, check out Exodus. Uh, Celtic Frost are pretty good. Uh, I don't know if you count them as thrash or not. Um, loads of bands, man. You can just go through so many. Like, uh, oh, who else? Oh, my brain is just melting thinking of, like, thrash bands right now. Um, Moment, my moment I try and call on my memory in these things, it's just like, nope, Creator, pretty good, you should just check them out. I don't know if you call them fresh. Speaking of bands that you should just listen to, I don't care if they're fresh now. Um, Vida, go check out Vida. Vida are fucking amazing, and it's criminal that Vida are ignored so much. Vida is sick. Go check out Vida. Um, who else would I recommend? Dissection I mentioned earlier, go check out Dissection. Venom Prism. If you're looking for a fairly modern, hard, hardcore, uh, deaf band that are really, like, out there, and everyone, you're thinking at home, wait, no one's listening to, there's no new guys. Venom Prism, a uh, Venom Prism, get the M and the N in the right place, uh, really doing some interesting shit and I've liked everything I've listened to so far. Very interesting. Should go check out them. Venom Prism. Uh, who else would I suggest? Oh, that is a good question. Oh, who was that? I was listening to a lot of Rotting Christ recently. Very underrated, and their back catalog is pretty big. You should check them out, as long as you're not offended by a band with the name Rotting Christ. Um, listen to a lot of Behemoth and Hiss from the Moat lately. Never really finished my Maiden diatribe. Um, Die With Your Boots On is a good song fairly underrated of theirs. To be honest, most of Peace of Mind is just wow. You know, whole thing beginning to end. Go listen to Peace of Mind. Um, maybe we have time for one more race. When I finish this, I really want to get right three, but there's going to probably be a gap because I ain't got paid for a while and I don't think the best thing to do is spend it all on video games, so... Yeah. <laughs> underrated, criminally underrated Maiden songs. I mentioned Afraid to Shoot Strangers. I mentioned a few there, like Wasting Love, uh, Holy Smoke. Oh, there's some great deep cuts in their back catalog. Caught Somewhere in Time. great stuff out there. Sea of Madness. Uh, only the Good Die Young is very un underrated. The Clairvoyant is very underrated. Of uh, so, uh, the, 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 the Seventh Sun album. There's loads of good stuff on Seventh Sun album. Uh, Infinite Dreams. I mentioned Dream of Mirrors before from Brave New World. The Alchemist on... Um, Final Frontier is very good. Tears of a Clown on um, Brave, New, Brave New World, Brave New Souls. Book of Souls is very good. Book of Souls is very good in general. A lot of cool stuff on there. Um, Book of Souls has... Oh, I need to re-listen to that. It's been a while. It's been a hot minute. Deep cuts, man. Deep fucking cuts. Sanctuary, if you're going to go real deep. Uh, sanctuary, running free. Uh, wow, I 
I've done literally every race and I'm just stuck with time attacks. Oh, wah. Oh, this one's, oh, uh, nah, I'm gonna do that. Yee. Gonna do me this way. Let's at least try a time attack that I haven't tried before to at least give myself a clean shot, you know. Oh, that's an... Uh, uh, motherfucker, I'm gonna end on a bad note again. Let's just try it. Uh, you want my deep cuts on Metallica that I recommend. Uh, trapped Under Ice. To be honest, the entire Ride the Lightning album is just a banger from beginning to end. Uh, Disposable Heroes, one that's overlooked a lot. A Leper Messiah, The Thing That Should Not Be. Uh, to Live Is To Die, Die As Eve. Oh man, there's some sick Metallica in that early era. Uh, Seek and Destroy, because it's the first album. Oh shit, we're using this bike? Oh, I'm gonna die. Um, yeah, the first album has a load of good stuff on it. Um, but yeah, if I was gonna say anything in particular, I'd say Seek and Destroy, obviously, and Hit the Lights. A lot of people like the horseman. Uh, it's okay. Uh, well, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that's better known for whom the bell tolls, fate to black, and all of that is just amazing. Uh, Blackened, obviously, kind of got bored of one because I've heard it so many times, but it's still good. Uh, that's that. A lot of their slow songs, they work in a very similar scale. One fade to black and all of that is similar kind of like part of the fretboard, similar keys. <sighs> Metallica songs that people kind of ignore but shouldn't. Wherever I may roam, <laughs> I mean like. Joys, that's the uh, unforgiven. <laughs> it quickly is subdued. Sad but true. Kind of one of the most played Metallica songs. Yeah, uh, Megadeth songs that people ignore that probably aren't too bad. I mean, I don't like Sweating Bullets because that's just such a dorky song. Hello, me. Meet the real me. <laughs> but what's that other one? Um, that was on The World Needs a Hero. Uh, oh. Dread in, the, Dread in the Fugitive Mind. I don't mind that song, but it's, again, in that kind of riff of he's just talking. What's yours is mine. <laughs> What's mine is mine, too. <laughs> Shake my hand, but I count your fingers. Not their best era, but not their worst. Trust. Give risk everything you want to give it. It deserves it, but trust isn't bad. Very, like... I can't deal with rejection very well is basically what I took from that. Um, a Tout Le Mans. Hardly a unheard of song of theirs, but still uh, In My Darkest Hour. Uh... Hook in Mouth, I love Hook in Mouth, but it criminally underplayed. Jeez. Uh, uh, this Day We Fight, with Dialectic Chaos at the beginning, very good two-parter there. Uh, not their best, but it's not their worst. Uh, Five Magics, Devil's Island. Obviously, Good Morning about Black Friday and My Last Words, or Last Words, whatever that one's called. Criminally underplayed, very good. Uh, I mentioned I Ain't Superstitious before the cover, it's a very good cover. And. Um, what else is on Peace Sales but who's buying that? So. Wake Up Dead's alright. I really like the riffs on Wake Up Dead, but every time I think of Wake Up Dead, all I can think is, I know if I wake her, I will wake up dead. It's literally about someone cheating. So you're a bit like, 
Nah, fuck you. <laughs> like, you know, just like, no, you're a prick. About the ever lover. Oh, another favorite, another favorite, another favorite, another favorite is Bad Omen. A lot of people don't talk about that track. It's pretty much forgotten on P cells, but it is good. That just a and the pick scrape. Sounds like it's gonna be like without lyrics because it's got such a huge build up, but then you're like, oh, it has stuff to it. Bad Omen's good. Uh, mechanics, people ignore mechanics. His hilarious version of, uh, oh, hilarious. This is ridiculous, especially the bleep version. Uh, these boots are made for walking because it's literally like a Morse code machine <laughs> when they bleep out everything that the record company said. Okay, the artist doesn't find this funny, bleep all of this out. It's kind of like what happened to Typo when they did a cover of Crosby Still. Is Crosby Still the Nash? No. Oh. Summer breeze. <laughs> Makes me feel. And apparently, like, they really didn't like the fact that he changed it to Summer Girl, and it was all about him going inside a girl, and then, like, Kenny Hickey dead on the sidewalk. Which is still one of my favorite, like, lyric pairings ever. Kenny Hickey dead on the sidewalk. Devil music from the house next door. It's like, yes. And if you listen to their cover of Paranoid, it's a completely different song. It's very interesting. Talk about deep cuts from Typo Negative. I'm the green man. <laughs> Be My Druidess. Even though it has this really... You can't listen to Be My Druidess when you've got people in the car who, I don't know, you work with. Or, you know, you just like... Someone you just casually kind of acquaintances with because he just goes I'll do anything to make you come <laughs> and you're just like don't make eye contact don't make eye contact <laughs> that's the worst also I didn't win boo boo Shall we take a break there and I'll think of some more deep cuts? I'll make some notes on some deep cuts. We'll talk about typo next time. It's hilarious, man. Oh, the time. I didn't, look at that. 148 and I was supposed to get a 145. Just for bronze. Yeah, I think we've bled this. <laughs> like, so from overtakes. Oh, we're dumb. How am I gonna do the time attacks on I'm like bad? Ugh. Anyway, ciao for now.